Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. For the last so many episodes, we have been talking about our life meaning and purpose. We've been talking about it in context of, okay, well, first of all, why is it even important for us to live our life meaning and purpose? What does it have to do with our ability to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy? And secondly, we have also been addressing a lot of the problems, the challenges that can come in our way of being able to live our life meaning and purpose. And of course, whenever we talk about problems, we also talk about solutions. And today what I want to do is actually continue to talk about some of the problems and solutions when it comes to living our life meaning and purpose. But I want to frame this in the context of my own life story, my own survivor to thriver journey. Because I find that sharing our stories is one of the best, most effective ways that we can communicate the really important and crucial lessons that we have learned in our lives. So for me, the first uh, so many years of my survivor to thriver journey were focused on just learning how to achieve inner peace, just at a very, very basic level. It was only after I had learned how to create and maintain a certain basic level of inner peace for myself that I was able to really shift my focus onto other aspects of my life and start to think about other needs that we have as human beings. You know, sometimes um, there, what, ha- what can happen for us is that until we have met certain needs, we cannot really focus on some other needs because one thing forms a foundation on which something else builds. So for example, if you want to have joy in your life, well, joy is really built on a foundation of inner peace. If you do not even have inner peace, you will find yourself really struggling to experience joy in your life or to be able to have a sense of control over your ability to create and maintain a sense of joy in your life because our experience of joy is built upon the foundation of inner peace. And so similarly, when it comes to living our life meaning and purpose, certainly in the way that my life turned out, 
it really needed to be built on the foundation of my having achieved a certain level of wellness, a certain level of control over my wellness. And this shift for me really began when I was in college. Because it was in college that I gained access to the help, the support, and the resources that I really needed to begin to make really um, uh, much, much faster progress in my own healing process. And as I continue to make that excellent progress in my healing process, I was able to begin to shift uh, from the place where I was like completely focused on, I need to achieve inner peace, I need to achieve inner peace, I need to achieve inner peace, to, hey, I'm in college and everyone around me is thinking about what they're going to be doing with their lives once they graduate college. You know, about in terms of our careers and the jobs that uh, we might go get or are we going to go to graduate school. It's like we're here, we're studying and it's like we need to do something with this. We need to use this education somehow in our lives. And those questions, before I got to college, and even the first two, three years that I was in college, they were irrelevant to me. But as I began to come closer and closer to my time for graduation, I found myself in a place where I had also begun to think about these things and think about them very seriously. And one of the challenges that I came up with at that point in time was that I'm just one of these people who have been blessed, really blessed with a really good mind, really good brain, right? So that allows me to be good at a lot of different things. And I'm actually really interested in a lot of different things too. I just love to learn. I'm definitely a student at heart. And even in terms of, okay, what major am I going to do? I always knew that I wanted to do psychology. But once I got into college and I started taking all these different kinds of classes, um, within psychology, I was like, yes, I love all my psych classes. But there were so many other classes that I was taking in philosophy and anthropology and women's studies and history and political science and even you know, uh, some of the hard sciences. And honestly, there's so few classes that I can even, like, oh, yeah, that I, I actually, yeah, there's probably the only classes that I took uh, in my entire college uh, career that I didn't enjoy was... Actually, huh. well, there was these these uh, computer programming classes, and I actually uh, even enjoyed uh, doing them uh, a computer programming class my first semester. It was just that when I took it again the second semester, uh, and then a third time, it was starting to get too much. I was like, no, this is just the wrong class for me. This is not the thing, right thing for me. I backed out of, of uh, doing more computer programming. But other than that, I really cannot think 
of any classes that I took in, in college that I didn't enjoy, that I didn't like, that I didn't want to actually be in. And then I was like, okay, so great. I'm, I'm definitely doing the psych major. But then there were like seven other majors that I was like, hey, I want to major in that too and in that too and in that too. And when it came to thinking about, okay, well, what can I do in terms of work, in terms of a career? It was like, again, there's 10 different things that I want to do. And each thing that I thought about doing seemed um, like it was something that I could really dedicate my life to. There were people who, for each one of those things, there were people who had dedicated their lives to it and they were spending their lives doing that work and finding it to be really fulfilling and happiness promoting and there's more than enough to be done in just that one field and I was interested in 10 fields like that. It's like, oh dear. So it's like, on the one hand, you know, it's, it's a really awesome experience uh, to, to have so much interest in so many things, to have so much passion for so many things. It makes life really, really interesting. But at the same time, the reality of life is that we all have 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, 30 days in a month, 365 days in a year. And there's only so much that we can do in the time that we have. And our work, our careers are not the only things in our lives either. We also have to make sure we are paying attention to other aspects of our life like our families our relationships our our health so i was like okay cannot do everything i have to figure out what i can do what would be the best thing for me to do And when you start to think about, okay, well, what's the best thing for me to do? It can be really kind of challenging um, to, to figure that out. And you're like, you're, if you're, especially if you have that mindset of, I have to figure out the best answer. It can put a lot of pressure on you. Because then it's like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. I mean, like, especially if you're thinking about it in terms of, um, like, I, I, I had also been seriously thinking about going to graduate school. You see, because, like I said, I love to study. I'm a student at heart. Definitely, there were so many things that I wanted to learn more about, go deeper and uh, and, and take my studies even deeper in, in those fields. But the thing is, I can't go to graduate school for 10 different things. Certainly not at the same time. So it's like, well, what do I pick? Even if I, if I decide I'm going to do all, there were actually seven, seven majors or seven fields of study that I was really, really interested in. And I wanted to get PhDs in all of them. I was like, okay, fine. Even if I eventually get PhDs in all these seven fields, I cannot do it all at once. So I have to pick at least, just, just pick one thing to get started with. But, but what is that one thing? And I just couldn't seem to find the best answer for that, the best fit for that and I start to feel like the sense of pressure that I'm coming closer and closer and closer to my graduation and I still haven't figured it out and that sense of confusion by the way also really kept me from taking focused positive action so it's like the time came for when I should have started to fill out applications for the different graduate programs that 
um, I was interested in and wanting to engage with, but because of my sense of confusion and lack of clarity, I let that deadline come and pass me by and didn't submit my application. And I was like, okay, all right, wait, backup plan. I can apply next year. In the meanwhile, I'll figure out. See, because one of the things that my teachers did tell me very clearly, and I took this message to heart, is that graduate school is not a place you go to to figure out what you want to do. It just takes too much time, takes too much money, too much effort for you to get into it without being sure about what you want to do. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, I'll just take some extra time to figure it out. Looking back at that time, I now realize that, first of all, I'm really glad I took that extra time and decided to give myself that extra time to just figure things out rather than jumping into applying to 10 different graduate programs and just kind of moving ahead with something that I wasn't sure about, that I didn't fully resonate with, that I just, you know, there was something about that idea that I liked that excited me, but there was something else that I just had this feeling like it's not the right thing. There's something missing here. And that sense of something missing dampened my sense of motivation, my drive and focus. And I'm really, really glad that I paid attention to those feelings and that I didn't just jump in to things, right? Because when, you, when, when I was in college at, at, at that time, see, there was like this sense of pressure, not just in terms of what I was, the pressure that I was putting on myself, but also in the environment. It's like every... When you're a student, everyone's asking you, what's your major? And what are you doing? What are you studying? And the closer you are to, to the point of graduation, everyone's asking you about, so what are your plans for after graduation? Where, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to graduate school? And especially at a university like uh, UCLA, which is a research university, you know, uh, going to graduate school is like something that's really encouraged. It's something that if you are one of the, t- um, you know, a, a seen as a student with potential, uh, a good student, it's like almost taken for granted that there's something that you will want to do to go into graduate school and further your studies. And so you're in this kind of environment and there are all these expectations that people have of you and then you begin to have of yourself. And it's like really easy for us to like just sort of begin to get carried away with this whole process and just kind of, you know, begin to live our lives according to this um this kind of culture and responding to this kind of environment. But you know what? This is like, again, just one of the very, I learned so many important lessons through this experience. And one of the most important lessons that I learned was the importance of listening to my feelings, my intuition around hey, okay, wow, okay, I need to take a step back sometimes and be like, okay, I know this is like what's being expected of me and this is what most people are doing and a part of me like has got caught up in those uh, points of views and those perspectives and has started to 
take on those uh, expectations for myself. But is this really the right thing for me? And the reason for that questioning, I mean, it's really, really important to do that question, especially if, you know, you're having feelings of, uh, that, that are indicating that, hey, maybe this is not the right thing for me. Or maybe I just need to, like, step back and, and figure out, like, what is, like, what is the right thing for me? So that's one thing. It's like, you know, yeah, look, when other people are talking and they're asking all these questions and they're giving you their best advice, they really are giving you their best advice. But their best advice may, not, may be the best advice for them. It may be the best advice in terms of this is what worked best for them in their context, in their life. But in so far as my life is different, my context is different, my strengths and weaknesses are different, my values may be different, their best advice, their best solution may not be the best solution for me. It may not, in fact, be the best advice for me. But who is the expert of my life? I am. I'm the expert of my life. So ultimately, I'm the only one who can make the decision of what is the best decision for me. In fact, I'm the only one who can figure out what is the best decision for me. No one else can do that because no one else is me. No one else knows everything that I know about me and my life, my circumstances, my values. So when, once you recognize this and you allow yourself to sort of take the step back from this is what society expects of me and et cetera, et cetera, to, and, and really think from a place of what do I want? What do I really need? What, is, what are my feelings, uh, you know, uh, guiding me towards? What are, what, is the message, what are the messages that are coming from my inner self? Then there is a sense of empowerment in that. There is a sense of ownership and taking responsibility for your own life and your own well-being that is really happiness promoting, that is really peace promoting. And it's so crucial that we take on this kind of responsibility and that we allow this kind of empowerment to enter into our lives and to live from this place of empowerment and taking responsibility for our own lives and our life decisions. All right, so I need to go ahead and wrap up here for today. And uh, we will, of course, as always, pick up where we're leaving off on tomorrow's episode. In the meanwhile, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already, please go on iTunes and leave this show that is the Survivor to Thriver show a five-star rating so that other people can also find it uh, and enjoy it and benefit from it like you are. All right. So until we connect next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.